What's up? Welcome to the stack. Welcome back. If you've been here before, I'm Neon Mushroom and it's Friday, which makes this the third day this week we've uploaded a, a gameplay video, which I think is pretty exciting because we really like making gameplay videos. That said, this is in fact an EDH game that we're going to be watching today. Nothing crazy about the game. There's no qualifiers. It's just, you know, how we normally play. Kind of optimized. No CDH, no budget in the, uh, in the lists today. And that's honestly everything you guys need to know before we get into the game. So let's go ahead and take a look at who's playing what decks they decided to play, what opening hands they decided to keep, in addition to our normal upkeep stuff. As always, if you like this show or any of our other shows on YouTube, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps us out immensely. If you like our content and don't mind that extra mile, you can always support us over on Patreon, over at patreon.com backslash mtgthestack. Hey, say just like Guy Scott. Just like Guy Scott. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. Comment down below any of your thoughts and feelings, and we hope you enjoy the show. Alright, first up we've got Guy playing Valky God of Lies, or more importantly, he's playing it for the backside of the card, Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. The idea of the deck is to be a mid-range deck that wants to control the game kind of early by using single target interaction and board wipes, and eventually take over in the late game by casting the backside of Valky, Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. Guy is lucky enough to be keeping a 7 card hand, including a Bantu's Last Reckoning, a Grim Tutor, Everflowing Chalice. Blightstep Pathway, two Snow-Covered Swamps, and a Tainted Peak. Next up there's me, and I'm playing a deck that I have not played on the channel for a minute. It's my Verena Lich Queen Zombies Tribal build that I've dubbed Rot Farm. The deck's strategy is fairly simple. You want to use the beginning part of the game to drop zombies and trigger Verena as much as possible, and then eventually try to win with either Combat Damage or even Gravecrawler Frexian Altar combo. I'm keeping a 7 card opener with a Lord of the Accursed, a Lord of the Undead, Wayward Servant, a Dimmer Signet, a Mana Crypt, Frexian Tower, and a Scalding Tarn. Next up we have Steve returning to the channel, and he is not bringing his Anala deck, don't worry that will be coming soon, but for today he's playing his Rafik of the Many build. This is going to be a straightforward Rafik build that you've probably seen many times before. It's a Voltron deck that wants to try to get the game over with by dealing lethal commander damage to all of its opponents. Steve was also lucky enough to keep a 7 card hand, including Heliod, God of the Sun, Thassa, God of the Sea, Swiftfoot Boots, Azoria Signet, Lumbering Falls, Celestial Colonnade, and a Basic Island. Last but not least, we have Aiden playing one of my personal decks, Lathral Blade of the Elves. This is going to be an elf tribal strategy, but not necessarily a full-on elf ball deck. It plays a few Voltron pieces and some key interaction pieces. Ultimately, this wants to be a mid-range deck that attritions its opponents out of the game. Aiden, however, didn't appear to get the memo because he's keeping a really risky one-lander that you might try in something like an elf ball build, but I wouldn't necessarily try to do here. It's going to be Court of Calling, Boreal Druid, Findhorn Elves, Nature's Claim, Swiftfoot Boots, Sword of Light and Shadow, and a Polluted Delta. Card game time. Calvin's not here to watch us be bad. Here, cards, take cards. Everyone take a card. Pick a card, everybody. Everybody pick a card. You pick a card, you pick a card. Ooh. On three. One, two, three, flip. Alright, Steve won card game, so he's going to start by drawing a card, and he'll play a Lumbering Falls as his land for turn tapped and passed to Guy. Guy's going to draw his card for turn, play a Snow-Covered Swamp, and with nothing else, we'll go to Aiden's turn. He'll draw, play a Polluted Delta, then he's going to fetch, going down to 39, search for an Overgrown Tomb and shock it in, going down to 37, and after shuffling up, he's going to tap it for a green mana and play a Findhorn Elves, and then pass the turn to me. I'll draw my card for turn, and then I'm going to go ahead and play Scalding Turn as my land for turn. Then I'll follow it up with a Mana Crypt, and I'll tap that Mana Crypt for 2 mana to play a Dimir Signet. Satisfied with my ramping, I'll just pass my turn to Steve. Steve's going to untap, draw his card for turn, and his first main phase will play a Basic Island as his land for turn. Tap out for an Azoria Signet and pass the turn to Guy, who will draw his card for turn. Then he plays Tainted Peak as his land for turn, which taps for red thanks to the swamp he has. Then he's going to tap for 2 to play Everflowing Chalice, kicked once so it will make 1 colorless mana. Then he'll pass to Aiden. Aiden draws for turn, gets punished for not drawing the land because he kept a 1 lander. Then he's going to tap for 1 to cast Boreal Druid and try to pass to me. Before he can, I'm going to fetch with Scalding Tarn and get a Hollowed Fountain into play tapped. And then we'll go to my turn where I'll untap, trigger Mana Crypt, flip for it, lose the flip, go down to 36, and draw for turn. Then I'll play Command Tower as my land for turn. Then I'll arrange my mana and I'm going to tap for two, one black and one white to play a Wayward Servant. After that, I'll filter one of my colorless from Mana Crypt into the Signet to make Dimmer and I'm going to cast Lord of the Accursed, which triggers Wayward Servant so all of my opponents will lose one and I will gain one. 
After that, we'll go to Steve's turn, where he'll draw his card for turn, play a Celestial Colonnade tapped as his land for turn, then he'll tap out completely for three mana, and he's gonna cast Kodama's Reach. He'll go into his deck and grab a copy of Forest and a copy of Plains, and he'll put the Forest into play tapped, and he'll put the Plains into his hand, then he'll pass the turn to Guy, who draws his card for turn. Guy's gonna play a Seer Step Pathway as his land for turn, then he's gonna proceed to tap out and cast Sad Robot. This triggers, so when it enters, he's gonna search his library for a basic snow-covered swamp, put it into play tapped, and pass to Aiden. Aiden will untap and draw his card for turn, still missing his land drop. He's gonna tap for three mana and cast Sword of Light and Shadow, and unfortunately just pass the turn to me. I'm gonna go ahead and untap, and then we're gonna trigger Mana Crypt. I flip, and for the second time, I lose the flip, then I'll draw my card for turn. After that, I'm gonna tap for four mana and cast my commander, Verena Lich Queen, which triggers Wayward Servant. All of my opponents lose one and I gain one. Then I'll head into combat and attack Guy with both of my creatures for 5 damage, but before we go to blocks, I trigger Verena and draw 2 cards, gain 2 life, and then discard 2 cards. After that, we'll go to blocks and Guy will block my servant with a sad robot and draw a card per its dice trigger. Guy will also take 2 for my Lord of the Accursed, then we'll go to my second main phase, where I'll drop Phyrexian Tower as my land for turn and pass the turn to Steve for the 4th cycle of turns. Steve's gonna untap, draw his card for turn, and play that basic planes that he got off of Kodama's Reach. Then he's gonna tap for two, and he's gonna cast Swiftfoot Boots. This resolves, so he decides he wants to tap out further for four, and he's gonna cast Heliod, God of the Sun. After that, he's got no further action, so he's just gonna pass the turn to Guy, who untaps, draws his card for turn, then he's gonna tap out for five, and he's gonna cast Neheb the Eternal. After that, he's just gonna pass the turn right back to Aiden. Aiden's gonna untap, and finally, he's gonna cast Noxious Revival, paying two life, to put the Polluted Delta back on top of his deck so he can draw a land. Then I'll draw the Delta, he'll play the Delta as his land for turn, then he's going to go down to 32 and crack it. That's going to have him searching his library for a land, and in this case the only legal target left is a basic swamp. After that point, he's going to tap out completely using both of his elves and both of his lands to cast his commander, Lathril, Blade of the Elves. With no further actions, he'll try to pass the turn to me, but before he can, I'm going to tap for two and activate Verena's ability. I'll exile two cards from my graveyard, and that's going to allow me to create a 2-2 tap zombie creature token, which triggers Wayward Servant. All of my opponents take a damage, I gain a life. Then on my upkeep, I'm going to trigger my Mana Crypt. I'll flip, and for the third time, I'm going to lose the flip, dropping down to 35, and we'll go to my first main phase, where I'm going to tap for five mana total, and I'm going to cast Archfiend of Ifnir. This is a very important card here, because Verena lets me discard a ton. So when I go to combat, I'm going to attack Guy with all of my available creatures, and trigger Verena four times. That's going to have me gaining four life, drawing four cards, but most importantly I'm discarding four cards, so all of my opponent's creatures will get minus four, minus four. Important caveat, however, we thought that this was minus four, minus four until end of turn, but reading the card explains the card, and a lot of you probably already know that Archfiend actually gives minus one, minus one counters. We did not catch that here, so we're going to actually take the negative one, negative one four times off of Neheb at the end step. It's not the biggest deal in this game, but it could have been a lot worse, so we're going to try to pay more attention to this moving forward. That said, the Archfiend triggers wipe most of the board, and it makes it very difficult for Guy to profitably block with his Neheb. So we're going to wind up going to damage, and Guy takes all of it, and he's going to drop all the way down to 22. After that, I'm going to drop a Darkwater Catacombs and just pass the turn back to Steve. Kicking off the fifth turn cycle, Steve will untap, draw his card for turn, and then he's going to tap for four and cast his commander, Rafik of the Many. Once this resolves, he's going to equip it with his Swiftfoot Boots, and now it has haste. He's going to go into combat, and he's going to attack me for four, and I don't want to lose my board wipe on a stick, so I won't block, and I'm going to wind up taking four twice. That's going to be eight commander damage total. After that, Steve has no further action, so we'll go to Guy's turn, where he will draw for turn, and then I'll go straight to combat and attack Aiden with Neheb, who, remember, still has four power because we messed up. So when Aiden takes four, Guy's going to go ahead and get four red mana in his second main phase. Then he's going to use three of that four red, and he's going to cast a Jessica's Will targeting Aiden. He doesn't have his commander, so what he's going to do is make a total of five more red. Steve's going to remember that his Rafik has vigilance thanks to Heliod, and now Guy is at a total of six red mana. After that, he's going to spend all six of his red mana in conjunction with tapping his Swamp for black, and he wants to cast his commander, Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. I have a response. I'm simply going to cast Fierce Guardianship, not wanting him to accrue that much value. After that, the stack resolves, then Guy's going to continue on with his main phase, and he's going to play a Snow-Covered Swamp as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap for a total of three mana, and he's going to cast a Bantu's Last Reckoning. Unfortunately for Guy, I never didn't have it, and I'm going to Flusterstorm the Last Reckoning. There are four Flusterstorms, because Storm equals three before I cast it, and that's going to counter Bantu's Last Reckoning. After that, he's just going to pass to Aiden, who draws a card, and continues getting punished for keeping a one-lander, so he passes to me. 
I'm gonna untap and then we have a mana crypt trigger. So I'm gonna flip and then I'm gonna lose the trigger for what I think has to be the fourth time this game. After that, I'm gonna head into combat and I'm gonna turn all of my creatures sideways at Guy and this is gonna trigger Farina four times. So I'm gonna gain four life, draw four cards, discard four cards, and that's gonna trigger the Archfiend four times. That's gonna wipe the board of Rafik and Guy is once again gonna think that Neheb gets minus four, minus four till end of turn. This is going to bring Guy down to 4, and I have no further action, so I'll pass over to Steve, who's going to start by playing Temple of Enlightenment tapped as his land for turn, and I'll leave the Scry on top of his deck. After that, he's going to tap for 3 mana, and he wants to cast Thassa, God of the Sea. After that, he's going to tap for 3 more mana, tapping out completely, and he'll play a Whisper Silk Cloak. After that, he has no further action, so he tries to pass to Guy, but I have some actions first. I'll tap my Phyrexian Tower, sacrificing a zombie token to make two black, and then I'm going to use the two black to activate Verena, exiling two cards from my graveyard, making a tap 2-2, and then draining the table for one and gaining one life. After that, I'll do it three more times, making three more tokens. Guy was at 4 when this started, so Guy is going to lose the game. Before Steve can pass the turn, Aiden has one more action. He's going to tap his Swamp for black and cast Vampiric Tutor, losing two life, going down to 21. And he doesn't reveal what he gets here, but we're going to see it in just a second, because Aiden's going to untap, draw his card for turn. Then in his first main phase, he's going to tap for one, and he's going to play a Soul Ring. After that, he's going to tap his Soul Ring for two colorless, and he's going to play his own copy of Swiftfoot Boots. With no further actions, he'll just pass the turn to me. I'm going to untap, and then on my upkeep, I have a Mana Crypt trigger, which I'm going to proceed to lose again. Thank God I'm gaining so much life off of Arena, otherwise I might be close to dead here. After that, I'm going to turn all of my creatures sideways, I'm going to put 5 damage on Steve, and the rest of it on Aiden for lethal. But before we can go to damage, I trigger Verena a whole bunch of times, I think it's got to be 7 at this point. I'll go up to 40, draw 7 cards, and then I'm going to discard 7 cards. After that, the Archfiend triggers, but there are no other creatures in play that aren't mine, so nothing happens there. Steve drops to 28, Aiden loses the game, and then I'll just pass the turn back to Steve. Steve's going to untap, but I have some actions on his upkeep. I'm going to start by tapping for 2, and then I'm going to activate Verena, exiling 2 cards from my graveyard, and I'm going to make a 2-2 zombie. That's going to trigger the Servant, he'll lose a life, I'll gain a life. Then I'm going to repeat that process one more time. After that, I'm going to finish tapping out for 3, and I'm going to pull a Calvin Trigger and Tefiri's Protection out of the game, functionally making me untouchable until he passes the turn. Steve's then going to draw a card, and he'll tap for 3 and cast Ardent Plea, which has Cascade. So he's going to start to reveal cards off the top, and the first one he hits is going to be Simic Charm. One of its modes is not target player phases back in. Steve sees the writing on the walls here, and he concedes the game, leaving me as the winner of today's game. Alright, it's Friday. Um, the game, well, the day of the upload, it's Friday. If you're watching this after, that doesn't make any sense, unless you're watching it exactly a week after, in which case it makes perfect sense. Anyway, the game wasn't super long, so let's not make the wrap-up super long, and then um, hopefully... Yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying multiple games a week. Um, more details on that soon. Anyway, that's a caveat. The game, Verena 1, the Rot Farm list is one I haven't broken out in a minute and I really enjoy playing it. Let's just kind of quickly review everyone's performances. And I want to start with Aiden Arnatovic, who kept a one-lander in a deck he really should not have kept a one-lander with. He, um, he was playing Lathral, Blade of the Elves, and I can see the urge to want to play it as an Elf Ball deck, to go ahead and uh, keep one land and hope to play Elf, elf and then ball out of control but that's not how that deck's tuned that's not what it does and um, he kind of knew that but also Aiden's a bit of a meme lord but he didn't uh, he didn't really go anywhere with it unfortunately so Aiden was out of the game kind of before it started and then there was a guy and there was the glaring misplay that all four of us made of just not realizing that Archfiend would have made his Neheb completely useless in the situation um, which meant that really what it means at the end of the day is that the person who won the game me would have had to use one less piece of uh, permission one less piece of counter magic which ultimately probably would not have changed the outcome of the game which is why i felt comfortable uploading it but um guy kind of did the thing you know he played his commander um, i got countered which is kind of what you can expect out of seven drop commander without like some really good backup like maybe a red blast or something but he just didn't have it and he kind of got hosed out of the game as well um that's a really sweet deck we're going to be seeing more of it but this wasn't the best performance for the deck itself then there was a steve who did the Voltron stuff. I'd say his tune is a little bit weaker than Foley's, but he made some interesting selections. Like you saw Heliod, God of the Sun, and Thassa, God of the Sea. The deck's really sweet. 
Um, actually, it, it could have just rolled through the whole pod, provided um, I didn't go as fast as I did. I've seen it happen. That, that deck can just kind of suit up. I mean, no surprise there. It's a Rafik deck. But he suits up Rafik and just takes out the player in the most dominating position and then moves down through the ladder. The game was like two turns too fast for him to get away with that, though. Um, all things said, I think the Rafik deck performed okay. But we'll just look forward to more Rafik games in the future. And then Varina... I started with a Mana Crypt, which already kind of like changes the weight and the uh, the speed of the game, the tempo of the overall game. And I've got mixed feelings on just the card Mana Crypt outside of a CEDH um, power level. Like if you're, if you're sitting down to play CEDH, I like Mana Crypt. I like Mana Crypt. But if you're like just playing optimized magic, if, if everyone's not on the same page, it, you can get the feel bads when your opponent just goes Mana Crypt into a rock because you're ahead by like two whole turns, like faster than what your opponents can do for the most part unless everybody's on the same page that said luckily Verena's not an overwhelmingly powerful commander in this game maybe that wasn't so obvious because she kind of dominated the game but um there were there were just few ways to stop what i was doing given the speed i was playing at which is why i think i'm actually going to either detune the Verena deck take the mana crypt out make it a little bit slower or be more selective on when it put when i pull the deck out because i hadn't played the deck in a minute i forgot that i tuned it to kind of hang at a very a higher power level not cdh but you know maybe eights and nines and um i think i was playing with like sevens and you know sevens and eights at the top level maybe uh maybe steve's deck was like a high six or something because he's a more casual player anyway hopefully the game review made sense i'm rushing a little bit because it's thursday night and i gotta get this video out tonight so it can be live for you guys on friday so i can start monday's video because content is an endless it's just an endless thing Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. This is not so, yeah. Playing Shadow is about to give me back this polluted delta is what it's about to do. That's not how that card works. You good? No? No, it gets creepy. Oh, fuck. You good? <laughs>